Hey, how you doing? Let's go for the second temple. Uh, Alright, I think everything's set up, okay. Alright, cool. So I've had a bit of a pause since uh, the last episode I recorded. But yeah, okay, so I got the full moon cello, and now I'm supposed to go for the second temple, obviously. Uh, but first I'm gonna get interrupted by this owl, okay? Alright. <clears throat> that is an instrument of the sirens! I have to admit, at first I did not believe you were real. Says the talking owl. Uh, that instrument, along with the seven others in the set, has the power to wake the windfish. You must collect them all. I was instructed to give you directions. Your next goal is north, in Guponga Swamp. Hoot indeed! Don't you hoot me. Fly away, you son of a bitch. How dare you. Da -da -da -da. What are you guys freaking out about? Hey buddy, it's serious! Yeah, it's really serious! Yeah, it is! The moblins came to the village! Yeah, that's right! A whole gang of moblins! Then it's for real! They all went to the house! Yeah, the house! And then they did something at Bow Wow's house! It was a really bad scene with them. M -m moblins So, I mean... It might be faster to find out for yourself what happened. Yeah, thank you. Bye, children. Oh, it's terrible! My Bow Wow was dog napped by moblins! Please, somebody! My poor Bow Wow! Alright. Ah, uh, so the moblins... ...are obviously north of here, I think. So where I couldn't go before. Uh, yeah, do I need to... Am I supposed to jump over here? Yeah, okay, alright, cool. Yeah, so I just, uh, I just came home. I had a really awesome weekend. Um, I went to uh, a Ninja Sex Party uh, concert yesterday um, at Frisuset. And uh, they were joined by uh, first a band called um, Planet Booty, I believe. It wasn't necessarily my jam, but I mean, I, I respected their hustle, they were really energetic and cool. Uh, but Twerp was amazing, uh, and Ninja Sex Party was uh, just, just great. Such an awesome band. Um, I've been listening to them for like three years. Um, and as it may surprise nobody, like, you know, if you're, if you're into like making videos on the internet and you want to like make a let's play or whatever, uh, oh, just hold on. Um, who's this suspicious looking runt? Okay, boys, let's get rid of him. Um, yeah, anyway, so. Um... Oh, damn. Whoa, whoa. Um, yeah, and the new sex party was awesome. And, uh. You must be an assassin sent by Madame Meow Meow to rescue the mutt. You came here to get me, but it is I who will get you! Sure thing, buddy. Okay. Um. Yeah, so... I've been watching Game Grumps for a long time, and um, I have no, like, illusions of, like... I don't know, you know, like, whenever you, you try to do anything, you know, like, oh, I... I'm gonna make a let's play or whatever, like people, you know, they're gonna be under the impression of like, like, oh, you wanna make it big or you wanna be somebody who's like, quote-unquote, uh, successful. Um, and I have no illusions about like, being, uh, you know, big or successful. Uh, I just, I just really like playing games and having fun. Um, maybe one day I'll, uh, you know, find like a collaborative partner and have somebody to talk to. Um, uh, me as I play, uh, or you know, as we play. Uh, but right now, I'm, I'm just like, like I've been thinking about just recording when I play games. Um, okay, so that is a fearsome-looking animal you got have there. 
Uh, do not forget, the next instrument is in Guponga Swamp. Alright, thank you, buddy. Uh, so, um... Yeah, what was I saying? Um, like, I think... You, you okay there, buddy? Alright. Um, I think, like, um... I mean... I've been, like, thinking about what's, what's interesting to, like, watch on YouTube, because there's so many people who just... You know, they sit and they, um, they scream, and uh, I'm not gonna pretend that I'm never gonna be, like, loud or whatever. Um, I mean, it would be cool to, like, play a horror game, um, and, I'm, and I'm so easily frightened. Uh, like, uh, like I've, I managed to beat Alien Isolation, um, but it was hard. Like, it wasn't... the game isn't that difficult, but just, like, the emotional stress of, like, playing through that game and surviving the Xenomorph is, uh... It's a whole ordeal. <laughs> um, oh, come on. And, uh... Eat it. Ooh. Um, but yeah, I've been thinking about, like, what's, uh, what's something that I could do, you know, to, like, add value to, um... You know, like, to playing games, because there's so, so many people who just, uh, I think... Maybe they don't... I think you should, everybody, anybody, whatever you do, you should always like try and find like a niche of things. And I think that like gaming YouTube is uh, heavily saturated, but mostly because it's like really minimum effort. You know, you, you sit and you talk and you play video games. Like I do that mostly all the time. Uh, you know, it's like it's not really that demanding. Um, but then I'm also thinking about like, okay, what what could I do to like add to the conversation or like. Um, what's an interesting thing that I could do with my skill set? And um, how do I? Wait, how do I? Can I use the walls to like offset them? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've been thinking about that because I mean, I, uh, at the end of the day, if you're if you're uploading something, you hope for people to see it, and then you kind of have to like consider like, okay, what's interesting for people to watch, and um, you know, thinking about what kind of. Um, what kind of skills you have is important. And uh, so about me, uh, I'm a I'm a game developer. I uh, I animate games. Uh, I animate. Uh, mm, I wonder how specific I should be. Well, uh, I'm a 3D animator, and um, I've worked as a 3D artist before. Uh, and um, the, most of my output has been animating horses for um, a particular like uh, game for girls, which is really popular. And um, right now, uh, I'm still working at the company who does that, but I'm doing something quite different right now. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, one of the tough things about working in uh, the games industry is that you know you're you're working on stuff, and um, all of it is like under NDA contracts, which which stands for non-disclosure. Um, Agreements, which is basically like a, a contract that you you can't talk about what you're doing um, because it's intellectual property and people might you know like steal the things and such and um, like um, MMORPGs and especially like that has um, like a release schedule or any online game or whatever like uh, it's really important that you like get to break the news about stuff and like uh, like game leaks. Uh, whenever like people um, like they release images that they find from oh I don't know like uh, like the recent Blizzard leaks from um, when you saw uh, the Lich King like Bolvar um, with his hammer and stuff from the cinematic uh, before uh, even you know BlizzCon that that's kind of like a leak you know that's that's, that's really like I mean I mean it's a I'm not gonna say sad or boring but it's like you know, when you're working on a game, you kind of want to like present it in its best light, and when people just like um, release uh, like a like a picture or something, it's kind of like you're kind of spoiling like th the sequence of like revelations that you wish for people to like experience. Because you know, should come as a surprise to nobody, like Blizzard's um, cinematics team is like so good. And uh, their trailers are 
always like worth watching. I don't even play World of Warcraft anymore. I, like I stopped playing in 20. Oh god, when was it? Like 2010. Wrath of the Lich King was the last uh, expansion I played for uh, for World of Warcraft, and before like that that was preceded by like almost non-stop playing World of Warcraft since like 2004. So I mean, I was you know you play a game. For like over thousands of hours for over six years, you know, obviously you want to move on. Um. Oh, oh. Oh, that, that worked out. Well, yeah, so anyway, uh, I've been thinking about like, what can I do when I play games and such, and it's like, yeah, I mean, I, um, uh, I make games, and I think a lot about games, and I, um, uh, I don't make my own games yet, uh, although I really want to. Um, but yeah, I've been... I've been looking into like coding and stuff, but... I don't also... like, I don't want to spread myself too thin, like... I think it's really valuable to like, recognize when you need other people. Um, and coding is like, one of those things that I respect it a lot, because it takes a lot of effort to do. And um, yeah, I mean... I mean, you could do like a lot in uh, C Sharp in Unity, uh, and you know, even better than that is uh, you know uh, blueprints in Unreal. Oh, ah, uh, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, oh, they just ran away. Oh, okay, but okay, they count as dead. Cool. Extra dead because they're ghosts. And. Um, yeah, what was what was what was I talking about? I, I got a slight fever. Um, yeah, I got the power bracelets, and I can make pots. And um, okay, do I just walk over there? Damn it! Oh, oh, that was dumb. Wait, I can jump. I gotta. <sighs> okay, okay. But yeah, like, uh, I've been thinking about, you know, what can I do to be, maybe, like, fun and interesting, and, like, how can I have fun on YouTube, and how can I make stuff that, like, people like watching. Um, and yeah, I think, like, talking about games from, like, a game designers, or, like, a uh, game developer, I should say, specific perspective is, uh, could be interesting. And, um, and also, I, I enjoy playing, like, ridiculously difficult settings sometimes, like, um, I started playing Horizon Zero Dawn, and I just, like, set the settings to the absolute hardest difficulty. No! Uh, okay, damn it. And, um... Yeah, I, like, I turned off the HUD, and I turned off the minimap, and... I, honestly, it, it really improved the, uh... Um... Uh, like, the immersion. Like, cause you look... Like, when you have a big HUD over the screen, um... It kinda, like, takes away from the experience, like... If you have a minimap, you're mostly just like looking at the minimap instead of actually like instead of actually um, looking at uh, the world, which is what I really like about this current uh, HUD. With like, you get the little icon at the bottom left that signifies that I'm playing on uh, hero mode or, or adventure mode. I think it was called. Um, and obviously the hearts and the keys and the, and the items that I use on the top right. But that's about it. The rest of it is just like the game, you know. And um, yeah, I, I really respect that, like that kind of like minimalist, uh, like attitude towards UI. Okay. Try. Oh yeah, this is the room where. I'm supposed to kill these enemies in a particular order, and I can't really remember what that order was. But I remember that you get a hint from the owl. Owl statue. Okay. Alright, let's go down here. Okay.
Uh, slut på det avsnittet. Uh, det här var andra avsnittet då. Uh, skriver ner typ timesheets någonstans kanske. Mm. Okej, okay, så kör vi nästa här härifrån. Uh, synk. Okay. All right. Let's continue. Uh, so. Oh, okay. I don't have the nightmaker, so I can't go here yet. Um. Yeah. So I uh, sometimes like playing games on like the hardest difficulty. Like, um, I don't play permadeath, but I guess that would be an, like, an additional layer to uh, making uh, the game harder. And for those who aren't um, accustomed to that kind of lingo, uh, permadeath in games, essentially, you play the game as if, like, death is permanent. So if your character dies once, that means that, like, you have to start it all over from again. Like, you can't use save games. And, uh, well, you can use save games as long as you don't die. Um, but yeah, like... Uh, it basically forces you to like, it, it, like it adds like a, an, an additional layer of tension to the game, which is like really cool. Um, uh, I think I became aware of it as a concept um, back when like Far Cry 2 was really popular. I mean, it, it's still popular, but it was like I think it was like 2014 or something where people are like really going wild, like writing articles about uh, how co cool it is playing Far Cry 2 and like permadeath and stuff. Um, and I and I guess those kind of like open world games where you have like a lot of like um, control over your game oh, no. is um, like it really lends as well well to. Um, uh, that kind of play style, um, because like you're crafting your own experience by just running around in the world, and uh, um, like you invest a lot into it, and uh, it's really hard to like come back to that point if you die. So it like it, it raises the stakes. Um, kind of, I, I, I really think I really like that. I, I, I like, I think a lot of games today have remain difficult or easy I should say in some ways but still like uh, they want to cater to like more players which is uh, which is totally understandable and smart and just good um, but I, I really like games where like uh, I, I guess I, I like it when there's a lot of consequence to like your mistakes um, but it, it also depends on like what the consequences are um, like Nice. Because uh, sometimes games are kind of like annoying, but uh, I, and I mean, I guess that's like a design choice. Like, what, what kind of friction do you want to provide to the player? Should like, is this uh, is this intended difficulty, um, or is it just like an annoyance? And um, you know, if you remove like too many of those annoyances, then people like it kind of changes the game for people who are like really used to playing it. And um, you can actually like alienate a lot of players. Like I, don't, I think that uh, games like the Souls game usually, uh, like in the discussion of like difficulty, they're usually uh, held up as an example of like you can like the difficulty is kind of part of that of the challenge. Like the challenge is part of the experience of that game. I mean, uh, yeah. Paul's voice, skeletal stealth was. Wait, style for Paul's voice. So, rab rabbit bat skull. Rabbit bat, rabbit bat skull. Okay. Um. Uh, I think a lot of like open world games would be like really cool. Like if you introduce um, those kinds of stakes to it. Because uh, I wait, rabbit first rabbit. Excuse me, sir. Rabbit bat skull. Rabbit. Rabbit. Come on. Rabbit 
Alright. Go. Nice. Alright. That's not to say, um... I, I think, like, easy games are also really valuable, like, games where you can't fail, or games that are just, like, chill, or whatever, like... Because you enjoy games for different reasons. Like, I think Animal Crossing is super, uh, super charming and nice, and, uh, you know, a lot of players like it. Wait, did, do I go top right to get to the boss room now? Oh, I'll try. I, I can never remember, like, where the stairs go. Uh, it's also kind of, like, distracting myself. Uh, by talking as I play, which is surprisingly more difficult than I, you know, than I, like, than I anticipated. I mean, it, it could also be like a, an extra layer because I'm like English is not my first language, and um, uh, you know, like playing games and talking at the same time, like trying to think of stuff that's interesting to talk about is. Oh wow, cool! I guess I'll go into the boss room with one heart. That's. Alright, this is gonna go well. Uh, okay. Oh god. Oh hoo! I'm your bad guy this time! Hoo hoo hoo! Genie! Alright. Oh, and he's juggling fire. Oh, he's juggling fire! No! Oh. I can't move, but I'm still all right. Your little sword won't break this bottle. Even the walls here look tougher than that dinky thing. All right. If you say so. Yeah, you can't hurt me as long as I have my bottle. Let's go then. Come on. And go into the bottle. Strike him. Pick him up. I think it's three times. It's usually three times. Okay. You, you broke my bottle! Why you, you make me hopping mad! Okay. Uh Okay, I think it's the top one. Bottom. Top. Nay! Ah, <sighs> dang it. Alright. I mean, I could get him. <sighs> he threw, like, a really, um... Slow fireball. It was really big and slow. Uh, yeah, it was top right. So I go. I could just like skip. I. Dang, dang it. I should be able to just like go through this one. Then go right. Can I beat this boss with two hearts? I mean... I, I think that maybe... I'm only gonna take damage on the second phase, but I'm not sure. Um, like, it's really easy to get cocky and um, mess up. Especially when you're thinking about other stuff. Uh, while you're playing. Yeah, so I'm playing on hero mode, so... Because of that, I, I don't really get hearts. Uh, from enemies. I need to go to the fairy ponds, I need to like leave the dungeon, uh, refill on hearts and get back, and that also um, would mean that I need to like avoid all damage 
while going back to the temple, which is not guaranteed. So, especially not in, in the in the swamp. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try my best with two hearts. Let's see how it goes. Okay, here we go again. Yada yada. Oh, he doesn't talk. Nice. Just like pick up the bottle. Yeah, here you go. There's a lot of waiting in Zelda games. I mean, it's good because you you get time to uh, read the enemy's behavior, so they can like telegraph what they're supposed to do, and then you get to learn about like what you're supposed to do and. Not everybody is like as experienced playing games, um, so I mean it's good that it's slow, but it's a bit like sometimes I feel like you wait a, you wait a lot. It's like now uh, this wait for him to come back. I think it's the top one, bottom, top. Oh, I can just like wait for it to uh, dissipate. The top one. Nice. That went well. Cool. Nice. Another heart container. Uh, so now I got the bracelet, which means that I can lift stuff. I can jump and I can lift stuff. Time for a new instrument. You got the conch horn. All right, nice. So I got that. So now I can lift stuff and I can jump over pits. A prayer. Okay, so I'm going to the prayer. I think that's in the east. The prayer is waiting. Here you go, buddy. Thank you. Well, uh, what I really like uh, about these kinds of games, um, like Zelda and, and Metroid, does this a lot. It's not like you, you know, you keep introducing uh, different obstacles that you. Like, it's just like sprinkled in everywhere. Like, there's rocks everywhere. But you don't. Oh. Okay. Um, but you don't really know what to do with them until you get the gloves. Um, or the, the bracelet in this case. Uh, it's gloves in Ocarina of Time. And um, you kind of like think about how to get past it. Uh, and then later on, they provide you with a method of just removing them. Uh, so, it, like. They're. They're not keys, they're abilities, uh, and kind of by unlocking uh, the map successfully, it, it kind of provides you with a greater sense of freedom. Um, and it also makes you, like, it, it also makes it kind of feel like an RPG without using leveling systems. So instead of, like, using a number, you're, you're acquiring new items. Uh, and the items makes you feel more free and more powerful, uh, instead of, you know, just like the number. Uh, yeah, so in here lives Crazy Tracy, and she gives me a like uh, a damage uh, protection. Uh, or, or I should it's kind of like an extra life. You pay forty-two rupees for an extra life, which is a cool mechanic that I like. I wonder if this, uh, if the woman wants her, um, what's her, what's her name, like, Madame Meow Meow? Uh, if, he, if she wants her, she probably wants her dog back. So I'm gonna return to the village. Yeah, 
Yeah, so... Oh, thank you. Thank you, doggy. Oh, uh... Okay. Yeah, I couldn't do anything down there. So I think... Yeah, I'll head back to town. Oh yeah, and he, the dog also shows you, like, uh, digging spots where there's treasure. Um, I think there's a seashell here. Uh, dig rough! Yeah, but I don't have a shovel yet. I think the shovel is like 200 rupees or something. And I don't have that. Uh, I guess I chose to spend my money at Crazy Tracy. Secret seashell, but what do you do with it? Mm -hmm. Alright, so I'm gonna deliver the dog back to this lady. Woo, I really appreciate what you did for my poor, precious Bow Wow. You are such a nice boy. How can I ever repay you? I know. Smooch. Cool. You got a reward from Madame Meow Meow. Look, <laughs> Look at his face. Look is cute in this game. Yeah, I think this is gonna be it for... Uh, I think I'm gonna take a short break here, because uh, I'm feeling a bit under the weather, uh, so I think I need to rest up. Uh, but I'll see you in the, the next episode. Bye!